Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at sepsis. What is sepsis? Sepsis is the body's overreaction to infection or injury. In some cases, it can be actually a reaction, can be so severe, which can actually lead to organ failure and even death. Sepsis is common and causes more deaths each year than lung, breast, bowel cancer combined. The stats are quite overwhelming and show that five people are killed by sepsis every hour in the UK. So what does sepsis present as? Well, sepsis does not always present with fever or any obvious symptoms and therefore a diagnosis of sepsis can easily be missed. Some of the symptoms of sepsis are a high temperature or even a low body temperature, chills and shivering, tachycardia and tachypnea. Sometimes sepsis can actually be misdiagnosed as having a viral infection or even gastroenteritis and if misdiagnosed can lead the patient into potential septic shock. Symptoms of a person developing septic shock include confusion, disorientation, slurred speech, muscular pain, not urinating for 18 hours, breathlessness, mottled skin, loss of consciousness, feeling dizzy or faint. It's important that we manage sepsis quickly, otherwise it can develop into septic shock and therefore the ability for the dental practitioner or the dental team to recognize this is of paramount importance. So what group of patients are vulnerable to sepsis? This is where a thorough medical history is very important. So patients who are on chemotherapy medication, patients who are immunocompromised such as diabetics or patients with on renal transplant patients, patients who have had recent surgery, people who use IV drugs, women who have recently given birth, are pregnant or had a recent abortion. Most people think that you develop sepsis following an operation. In fact, approximately 123,000 diagnosed cases of sepsis in England every year, of which 30% are developed following an operation whilst in the hospital, while the remaining 70% are administered cases directly from the community. Sepsis claims approximately 48,000 lives every year. The symptoms of sepsis in children is slightly different and the key symptoms are that they are usually very lethargic, very sluggish to wake up. They can be cold to touch. They may have febrile convulsions. They may have mottled, bluish or pale skin. They can have rapid breathing. The mortality rate, however, in children is lower than that of adults. Adult mortality rates is approximately 30%, whereas in children it's about 5 to 20%. It's important to mention that a raised temperature is not a key indicator in children for sepsis. Neonates can also develop sepsis and again the symptoms slightly vary and these should be recognised as the child is not interested in having a feed, is not drinking regularly, there's no wet nappies, they tend to have sunken eyes and can be quite flappy and unresponsive. The National Institute for Health and Care Excellence and ICE also provides a guideline into the management of fever and sepsis and divides it into three age bands, zero to four years, five to 11 years and 12 years and over. So what is the treatment for sepsis? Well, if you feel that a patient has sepsis, you should send them straight to the hospital. In the hospital, they will undergo an assessment and be observed in, in accordance with the NICE recommendations. The hospital will usually assess their level of consciousness, their pulse, their respiratory rate, the temperature, the blood pressure, and the urine output. Sepsis 6, which has been proven to reduce mortality rates. The sepsis 6 in terms of management include oxygen, taking blood cultures, IV antibiotics, monitoring urine output, measurement of lactate, and IV fluid resuscitation. For children, a traffic light system is utilized, where green is low risk, amber is intermediate risk, and red is high risk. Mortality rates can increase by approximately 7.6% every hour if the administration of antibiotics is delayed. So how can sepsis be relevant to the dental practice? Luckily, it's very rare, but dental teams should be aware of what sepsis is and also being able to recognize the signs and symptoms of sepsis and have a practice protocol and sepsis policy in, pl in place. Luckily, it's rare, but a few dental infections can lead to sepsis and these can include pericoronitis, 
acute dental abscesses, dry sockets. So any kind of infection can lead to sepsis. So is sepsis actually contagious? Well, sepsis is not contagious and cannot spread from person to person. Like caries cannot spread from person to person. So what's the post sequelae morbidity in terms of having sepsis? Well, it depends upon the severity of their condition. About a third of the population that develops sepsis will not survive. The two thirds that do survive can recover completely although 40% of these patients may have lasting effects, such as damaged organs, insomnia and fatigue, nightmares, hallucinations, panic attacks, amputations due to tissue death, post-sepsis syndrome. There's a lot of information available if you wanted to do some further research into the subject matter. Sepsis Trust UK is an excellent source of information. NHS Sepsis Overview and the UK Sepsis Trust Toolkit. You'll be able to find all the attachments in the description below. Well, I hope you found this video useful. Please kindly like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps the channel grow, and we will be continue to provide you with more free content in the future. Thank you very much again for listening. Bye-bye.